So we've been talking about this one. We've been teasing this one for a long time. Yeah. This is a big one. This is the Bigfoot episode. Bigfoot episode. Oh my gosh. Uh, what a character, Bigfoot. Uh, love Bigfoot. Is, is he fact or is he fiction? Harry and the Hendersons kind of starts out like, uh, I, I know what you did last summer or something. Yeah. <laughs> it was weird that uh, Bigfoot was wearing a, like a Gordon's Fisherman <laughs> rain slicker. Yeah. Is that the mom from E.T.? Um... I don't know. I don't think that's D. Wallace. And like, I got HBO Max specifically for the Snyder Cut, and so like I've been watching all the documentaries. So I saw like the Steven Spielberg documentary, and it's like Steven Spielberg. I j like just from from knowing his work, it's like oh, his dad must have been a real piece of shit because every one of his movies is about a dad who leaves yeah. and and like you know screws over the whole family, and then uh, and in in the documentary they address that, and it's like. His parents split up, and his dad deliberately told them that it was his fault. He was the one leaving, and, and you know, and um, and Steven Spielberg just like hated his father ever since after that, and like screamed at him, said called him a crybaby, which actually like shows up in Close Encounters when oh yeah he, he, the kid calls calls um, Richard Dreyfus calls Richard Dreyfus a crybaby. Um, that's like taken from Steven Spielberg's life. Because uh, his dad started crying when he was telling them, "Look, I'm leaving. I'm splitting, you know, splitting up the family." Blah blah blah. Um, and then, like years later, Steven Spielberg found out that his dad was actually like he wanted. He 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 thought it would be better for the kids if they were like angry at their dad rather than angry at their mom. Because it was actually the mom. The mom uh, uh, was leaving the dad so that she could marry his best friend. She was I having did. an affair with his best friend. I did, and yeah. and it like uh, Steven Spielberg. Did not know this until he made like multiple movies about what a piece of shit his dad is, and then he found out. And then like now, him and his dad are like you super know close. super close, and, and even like his mom and his dad are re really close was, too. But but uh, I I just thought that was that was like pretty interesting. He needs to do like these like re edits, these like special editions, like uh, George Lucas did with the Star Wars movies to kind of like uh, tone down the dad characters, like have have like. Uh, uh, Elliot's dad from E.T. kind of pop in and say, hey kids, how's it going? You know? It's the Steven Spielberg, uh, my dad sucks, like, box <laughs> yeah. set. My dad whatever. fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's the, my dad fucking sucks edition. <laughs> He's like, you have to lay it on pretty thick, Steve. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> the, but yeah, we're getting off topic. I mean, this the, is, we're, we're talking about well, actually, big, the, the Bigfoot. You're right. This this is an Amblin movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, Spielberg, like, Spielberg is like so amazing and he just had like a million ideas and things like and he's he's one of those guys It's like the 10,000 hours where oh it's like he gosh. put in his 10,000 hours when he was a child So, you know, like uh, You know in his early 20s and his teens. He's like making these like amazing like TV <laughs> movies and stuff Oh, he was a boy scout and he I, and yeah. he did the uh, we, Yeah, the filmmaker we're gonna have uh, to yeah, we're gonna have to apply for the filmmaker the badge. badge Close Encounters he made like sort of like a Close Encounters movie when he was a kid and then, uh, like, Poltergeist. He made, like, a Poltergeist oh. kind of movie when he was a kid. And then, and then, you know, sort of, like, produces Poltergeist. He doesn't direct it. And then, and then yeah, you got, like, Harry and the Henderson. So you know he must have done, like, a Bigfoot oh movie when God. he was a kid. And, it, you know. If we could only get, like, it's like, Steven, release your original uh, Sasquatch movie. Like, S Steven Spielberg has this, like, amazing body of work that he directed. And then there's, like, this, like, massive body of work that he, like, you know produced was like involved in, in in like a different capacity you got like back to the future stuff, and then you got like the transformers series oh and stuff, you know all these oh. the, and those amblin movies have like a special feel that other movies try to capture they're like i can only get that amblin magic mm -hmm. it's like bigfoot <laughs> steven Spiel my dad fucking sucks and then we met bigfoot and then my dad fucking sucks and then we met an alien my dad fucking sucks and our house is haunted uh, my dad fucking sucks and i found uh, the ark of the covenant I probably did indiana jones 3 when he like realized his dad wasn't an asshole oh my gosh and, you know, that's amazing and then it's like hey dad you know hey let's let's reconnect and let's uh, ride ride some motorcycles together in, in the uh original uh raiders of the lost Ark, yeah he, he's like son why did you incorporate like Family uh, footage of me went to the melting scene. <laughs> Man, that must have been awkward. <laughs> when yeah. It was like, oh, when he like realized it, it's like, uh, Dad, Dad. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I got something I want to tell you. Okay, son, let's let's hear. It. It's better we could. Because <laughs> I've been I've been taking a beat. I've been taking a drubbing in your movie. The the guys at at the uh, at the lodge have been uh, ribbing me for for years about about these movies. You know, he's got to do this special special edition where like. 
My dad's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's like my dad's cool addition. Tell me about Bigfoot. I'm 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 just a fan of the character. Like, okay, I love this character. I love okay. I love everything about him. I love his I love his look. Mm -hmm. Love the hairy look. The uh, I love the where he's usually found. Like yeah, Pacific Northwest. I like the that California setting. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and I love that Nate. Uh, it's like he's like a like a legend, like Native American legend. Mm -hmm. uh, from like the Pacific Northwest and Canada, um, but I, I I just love it's he's a great character for some reason he just it, it sticks with me and and I kind of got into Bigfoot uh, just uh, it, like a confluence of a bunch of stuff simultaneously. Mm -hmm. What was your first pop culture Bigfoot? So Harry and the Hendersons uh, in '87. It was like a couple things. It was like Harry and the Hendersons happened. Uh, I saw that in the theater and also. Uh, there was a magical world of Disney Bigfoot movie directed mm -hmm. by Danny Houston, of all people. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, you know, you'll see him. You know, years later, brother of Angelica, son of John. Like he'll be in like Wonder Woman, a bunch of flicks. Yeah. Um, but uh, like, it was uh, Harry and the Hendersons that, and also at my local library. Uh, they had these plaster casts of yeah. like footprints in a glass case, and uh, I was like, "What the heck are they?" I, I thought like I just liked the look of them. I thought they mm -hmm. were cool objects, and they're, and it's like, "Oh, Bigfoot walks around, and these people make uh, prints, uh, you know, capture the prints." When I first saw those Bigfoot plaster casts, because I'd seen like pictures of them in, 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 in books. I thought like, oh, that's that's how they make the Bigfoot footprints. <laughs> it's, like, it's like they get these cement feet and then they press them into the ground. <laughs> that's what I did too. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, it's like you take that. You take and the you cement foot, you press it down, down, and then you got the it's like that's the funny thing with Bigfoot. It's like he's called Bigfoot, he's got a Bigfoot. But like that was like our like the symbol of Bigfoot is like a footprint, and that's how we know him as this like like his main trait is like he makes footprints. He makes big footprints. He's like, yeah, I, I found it. If Bigfoot was here, he would take this print and embed it in the dirt like that. And oh, look, there's one right there. Because obviously, like his foot isn't the only big thing about him. Like he's yeah. obviously got big hands, hands big head. Dead. But like, uh, you know, I guess the foot is like that's that's the evidence right there. There's there's the footprint. You yeah. see his footprint, and that's how we know this guy was here. And uh, you know, nobody unless you have. A big cement <laughs> foot that you can like. They're like the he leaves a big footprints and big giant dumps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big dump. How come he wasn't called? How come he wasn't called like big load or something? Big big turd. So I'm gonna die. Talk. Your first experience uh, with like a, a cinema Bigfoot was Harry and Henderson's. Mine was the Bionic Bigfoot from the Six Million Dollar Man when uh, Lee Majors. The Bionic Man, the Cyborg, whatever you want to call him, went toe to toe with the Bionic Bigfoot, that, and and so that kind of informed my understanding of Bigfoot. Now, now, I feel like they te that must have been like a multi-part episode because I feel like it went on forever. They teased yeah. it just endlessly, and then they had this like super cool toy, and oh, you could like yeah. remove his chest, and then you'd see like all the robot parts. So like, for me, it was like Bigfoot being like a robe, a cyborg, it oh, was kind of like always so hard, awesome. uh, you know, it's hard for me to separate that element from it because like the first impression was the bionic Bigfoot. Like my cousins then kind of like told me then about the bionic Bigfoot mm -hmm. and they had, uh, I saw, I saw, I managed to get a uh, lunchbox and mm -hmm. thermos. So I have an old like vintage thermos <laughs> with the bionic Bigfoot on yeah, it. Yeah, the bionic Bigfoot, <laughs> like it's like, it's awesome. kind of it's like you know the Fonz on Happy Days or something. It's like it's like the Bionic. I feel like he he took over the show. Yeah. Now maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just a couple episodes or something. But it's like once the Bionic Bigfoot showed up, it's like okay, Steve Austin who? You know? <laughs> yeah, because he went to the uh, the their office and was like this damn Bionic Bigfoot <laughs> um, <laughs> making Fucking moves, up my game. <laughs> <laughs> making moves on this show. I rewatched that episode uh recently i forget well, maybe it's on youtube or something but it's so great it is so amazing like the the fight it's it's just one of those like they're on a volcano you know? or something is that, yeah. is that did the bionic bigfoot go on to the bionic woman 
too? Like, I, was it yeah, I mean, th those were all crossing over with each other, you know, uh, like in every like imaginable way. What a good look too. He's like beating up us. Uh, was it Steve Austin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great fight. Just like, just like one, like one of those like David and Goliath uh, kind of thing. Like you know, like a great wrestling match uh, or a great, you know, just the build up and and, and then the fight itself is amazing. You know, uh, Harry and the Hendersons. Harry, like just a great animatronic face. You know, great suit. You know, like oh yeah, Rick Baker. We yeah he, we we've mentioned him on the Total Recall show before. Uh, I think he got like an Oscar nomination for this. Yeah, and and he's not. It's not like he's like shrouded in shadow, or you're not getting like just quick cuts of him. You're getting these like you know still still kind of spooky lighting, but like well lit scenes where the camera is just lingering on him and, and he's, he's like uh, emoting and yeah and uh played by Ke the late kevin peter hall who played the yeah <laughs> you know um uh, harry kind of looks a little like john lithgow and it does make me th think of like with a lot of these like fantasy movies and these um you know sort of spielbergian uh, uh lucas kind of things where it's like there's there's some like larger issue like that that there's some kind of uh, like uh, Oedipal thing or there's some kind of like you know Freudian father issues going on where like you know like Harry maybe almost like symbolizes like aspects of their father you know and and you know maybe, oh. maybe like you know <laughs> like his like rage or something like like instead of doing a movie about like a dad who like rages out or like gets drunk and starts you know uh, screaming at everybody instead they're gonna make like a fun Bigfoot movie where instead of dad doing all that, it's, there's gonna be a Bigfoot Big who kind of <laughs> looks like dad. Uh, you know, this like nine foot tall. Uh, um, like creature. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, <laughs> I think you were gonna say this nine foot tall cretin. This nine foot tall cretin. Uh, you know, th there was talk of like with, with the Simpsons, like that the original idea for Krusty the Clown was that he was gonna be like identical to Homer and like you know, he was going to, like, that Bart was going to, like, hate his dad, but then love this guy who's basically, like, like a thinly veiled clone of his father, and so, like, there was some kind of, you know, thing going on there with that. Oh, yeah, he's going to punch through the wall here. Yeah, so this is, this is almost like you could imagine, like, the, the, like, okay, the, the uh, naturalistic version of this story, where it would be, it would be John Lithgow <laughs> getting, getting all worked up and, like, punching holes in the wall and screaming at everybody. But he's like, like, like uh, 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 Great Santini or something. Oh, you know? yeah. This is like, what if the Great Santini, instead of like Santini being the guy doing all this stuff, what if a Bigfoot shows up <laughs> and does all this stuff? There was a movie called Radio Flyer. Yeah. It was um, Dick Donner did it. And so like the, the Bigfoot costumes from that magical world of Disney movie, in Radio Flyer, <clears throat> Joseph Mazzello and Elijah Wood imagine like this monster and they I thought those costumes were so scary in the Bigfoot movie I was like maybe I'm just too much of a wiener <laughs> no they use them again and repurpose it as like the most terrifying thing and like but uh in Radio Flyer it's like uh talk about a bait and switch the the the, the trailer is like uh the imagination runs wild yeah it's really, like a sweet a sweet thing kind of, yeah and uh, it really, it's like, uh, it's like I'm gonna imagine my radio flyer turns into a plane to escape my abusive father. <laughs> like this Harry and Hendersons, it could be, you know, like like an M Night Shyamalan kind of thing, where it's like, okay, all the, you're watching the whole movie thinking it's like Bigfoot, dude, but it's like, you know, John Lithgow's got his rifle out. It's like John Lithgow just like shot a bunch of holes in the house. And <laughs> yeah, you're right. And during the twist of the end, it yeah. kind of, it turns out that there, there never, yeah, there the never, there, yeah, there never was a, a Bigfoot. It was just that all this stuff was done by by Dad. You should I saw it the whole time. It like it, it fades. It's not Harry. It's uh, his son. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's like right in the crosshairs. It's like remember that time uh, Dad <laughs> punched a hole in the wall and then got his <laughs> rifle out and was screaming his head off. It's like uh, and, 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 oh my and, god. And it's like no, that never happened. That, that was Bigfoot. Bigfoot was there. Dad was defending us from Bigfoot. No, you don't it understand. Was it was Dad all along. Is, we need to re <laughs> cut this where uh, Harry's not in it, and it's his. It's him it, doing it, all this stuff. It, it becomes like raising cane, you know, like it's it's raising. You 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 cut this with raising cane. 
character. One of my favorites is when he throws all the, uh, he gets all the McDonald's and is trying to get Harry into like the car. He's like, wash it down with a chocolate shake and just throws like a shake into like the front seat. Bigfoot's not around. Yeah, they're like, why is dad throwing all this food into the car? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tom, please. <laughs> this is like the greatest thing I've ever heard in my life. They're like, he dug a grave. <laughs> I used to play the Bigfoot board game. I don't know it was the like Bigfoot from the board 70s game. Oh or something. My God. It was like maybe the same era as like the Duke's of Hazard board Holy game. It was shit. like all these like little like Bigfoot I'm talking about like Bigfoot being like centered in like the Pacific Northwest and stuff like that and Harry and the Hendersons taking place in Seattle. Like I mean as a kid I wasn't aware of any of that. So I thought like oh if I went walking in like the woods, you know, down the street from where I live that like I might run into Bigfoot. Yeah. Know? Like I was looking at the list of uh like top sighting states and Pennsylvania is like the top one of the top five Bigfoot uh there's a lot of uh Bigfoot spot uh spottings in, okay yeah in PA yeah the the creek uh, <laughs> that, that was uh behind the cul-de-sac uh where I was a hot was a hot Sasquatch of, activity yeah. what's the overriding theory for Bigfoot because it's like okay you got the Sasquatch you got the Yeti uh you know it's like like what? What's what's the story? Like like is Atlantis involved somehow, or there, what's 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 the like what's the origin there, story? Is it supposed to be like supposed a leftover be, Neanderthal or something? I think so. It's like a missing link mm -hmm. uh, between like man and ape or something like that. And because well, like the Neanderthal, like the pictures I've seen of like Neanderthal man, kind of look like that. And then then they've said that like Neanderthal actually like lasted like more recently than we think. And that like some some of us do have like some Neanderthal DNA. Not everybody, but some people do. I'm like uh, I'm, I'm part Sasquatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My knowledge of Bigfoot is like very informal. I've never I've never like reinvestigated it in adulthood or anything. So it's like you got um, you got Sasquatch. It's, it's like Bigfoot, and then you got the Yeti, who's kind of like like Sasquatch is like that's the American Bigfoot, and then Yeti is like the Asian Bigfoot. So you'd assume there's like. This like there's just like there's just like there's people everywhere. There's there's Bigfoots Bigfoot. everywhere, uh, in every so there's like a European Bigfoot. There you know there's um, African Bigfoot. There's um, there's Australian Bigfoot. You know that there there's like Bigfoot in every culture. And 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 it's almost like this like parallel species that like is like off the books and, and that we've somehow never been able to kind of like <laughs> like nail down. Yeah, for, for, that's. For, that's pretty much it, and like, okay. it kind of like, I think it started up, that like the main big term Bigfoot was coined in like the 50s. Okay. Uh, there was like a guy who, like there was a construction site in like, I think it might have been the Pacific Northwest, um, where they found, uh, you know, big footprints and like stuff moved around, like oil drums thrown, uh, mm -hmm. and like their site messed up, and uh, I think that's where the term Bigfoot started like, mm -hmm popping up and then uh in the 60s there was the patterson gimlin film it's like second only to like this is a pruder film it's like right, the most yeah. famous like footage yeah like, like i remember seeing that as a kid and seeing it and it's like oh yeah there's bigfoot like, <laughs> like what's what's the controversy there he is like why why is it why is there any discussion it's like oh we have no proof Bigfoot exists. well there's there, there he is right there walking you know what more do you need if i uh ever won the powerball i would Try to get a original reel of the Patterson Gimlin. You know, I think there's a uh, there's an NFT available <laughs> if, 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 you, if you have some Bitcoin oh you want to get rid of. God. I, I was like looking into like where is it now? Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to do, do like some investigating or do some kind of like documentary on like trying to track down like where the actual Patterson Gimlin film is. I think there's like a mysterious like uh, it's like vanished from like a vault or mm -hmm. like some. You know, different people claim they had it, or like, uh, there's reels missing. It's like, I, I think it's hard to pin down now. Mm -hmm. Like the actual, like, I think they said they made like seven copies or something. But uh, well, I know like there, like there's those like holy relics that were assumed into heaven. So maybe <laughs> like this got assumed into like. Uh, you know, Bigfoot Valhalla or whatever, you know, wherever, the, whatever the cosmic real, land that Valhalla reside. They, uh, yeah, they saw the reels, like, ascend. Yeah. <laughs> there goes the Patterson Gimlin film. Is that, um, uh, who's, who's, who's that playing the neighbor? Is that, uh, she's somebody famous. Oh my gosh, I feel like, I La see Is her, that Lainey Kazan playing the neighbor? I'm not sure, let me, I feel like I see her, like, pop up on, like, you know, TV shows all yeah. the time. Lady Kazan. Kazan. Yeah, who was the basis for Big Barda, the Jack Kirby. 
character. Wow. And is Atlantis involved at all in the Bigfoot? I don't think or, okay. so. Because I, I kind of group, like, I think of all those, like, like the Time Life Collection, Mysterious Places, Alien Visitations, like all those things. Like, so, so it's like, okay, there was Atlantis, the Loch Ness Monster, uh, I guess uh, cryptozoology Crypto or whatever, yeah. you know, and, and Bigfoot. So I wasn't sure if, like, Bigfoot was, like, you know, like when, like when, uh, like you know, in, in in Atlantis there were the Bigfoots and there were there were the the, the humans and then and then they kind of. I, I was looking on. I'm I'm not even joking. Those old time life collection. Yeah. I was like trying to find them on eBay. Every, every now like, and then, if, I'll, I'll I'll let you know if I see Salvation Army or whatever, and, and they'll have uh, they'll have some of those. And like they're they're pretty ubiquitous because I think those like time life books they printed a lot of them. You know, yeah. they, they're selling it on TV. They're selling a lot of them. You know. Uh, so they're 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 not too hard to come by. Yeah. Bigfoot and Wild Boy was yeah. another one. Bigfoot and Wild I, Boy. I rented like all those all those episodes from uh, Eagle Video. Yeah, Bigfoot and Wild Boy. Like I I remember you know I remember that as like a current <laughs> show. You know, uh, I remember playing Bigfoot and Wild Boy. Yes. And, you know. Deep from the Pacific Northwest. I love the intro. <laughs> they're, they're running right at the camera, and uh, and I think that was after. Bionic Bigfoot because they were using the same like Bigfoot special effects where I mean the big same Bionic special effects where slow motion somehow means high speed you know <laughs> implies high speed I was just so hooked on all those like books of like books of the unknown or whatever yeah. getting them out like at the school library and reading about the Loch Ness monster I love that. the Loch Ness monster too and uh, another thing that um, around the same time. There was two books that I would check out from the library a lot. It was uh, by Marion T. Place. I think they're out of print, so uh, please send them our way mm -hmm. if, you, if anybody has any. Bigfoot uh, all over the country on the track of Bigfoot. Great uh, uh, Bigfoot stories in there. There was like a guy got kidnapped by Bigfoot, Bigfoot threw rocks at like these houses, uh, all kinds of stuff. Um, and then the Unsolved Mysteries Bigfoot episodes scared the crap out of me. It was like Bigfoot breaking into somebody's house. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know who the 23rd president was, but like what's seared into my brain in, in, in its place is Robert Stack's voice saying, tufts of hair snagged in the screen door. And I'm like, holy shit. We have all this proof of Bigfoot. Why is it a controversy <laughs> if we got, we got film and we got this, this hair that Ro Robert <laughs> Stack's talking about? And then when Robert Stack would do his like bumpers between like the things, he'd be in the woods and I'd be so scared for him. Like, don't turn your back to the forest, Robert. I'm like, Bigfoot's right behind you. Yeah. Like, I was like, this guy's a real uh, hero. They played that stuff so straight when like, there must have been such a temptation to have like this like big like rubber hand come behind and put it on the shoulder during those like bumpers. Then, how, about, how about the uh, rescue nine one one Sasquatch? Oh my god! Oh my god! He's like <laughs> shat. He's like talk. Sasquatch, big foot. Leonard Nemo is on uh, in search of. He did like yeah. a show called In Search of, and I remember uh, seeing some Bigfoot stuff on there. That I, Spa. Spa. Why are you having a career? <laughs> it's better than mine. I was the captain. My career should be better. <laughs> Bigfoot's tongue is stuck to the inside of my freezer. <laughs> Quick, call nine, call nine one one. He needs rescued. Like Harry is like upstaging everybody in the movie. Like he he is he's, he he can emote. They uh, did a spinoff Harry and the Henderson's television show. That's right. Yeah. And uh, well, you got that great suit, that great uh, animatronics. Like it, it's a shame to just like you know. Throw it in the garbage. Yeah, because like Rick Baker puts it in like a burn barrel. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Job well done. <laughs> I'm glad Rick Baker is like getting his due, you know, because it's like, man, like, you know, like just like such a genius and like just like prolific and, oh, and yeah. like like one of a kind. You're right. That uh, the suit they don't hide it at all. It's out in the open yeah. and it's it looks gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So awesome. There was a Bigfoot suit. Somebody said they found like uh, a Bigfoot like, like dead and they put him in like a Yeti cooler or something. Mm -hmm. And I, They put him in a kiss coffin <laughs> filled with ice. <laughs> oh my God, there's a dead Bigfoot. There, no, you're not putting him in my kiss coffin. <laughs> It's all we got, bro. Well, we're gonna make him up like the star, like the star child. <laughs> oh, we got Don Amici. Another. Oh, this is the secret. And look, of, he's got the cement Bigfoot feet that you use to make the Bigfoot dude, footprints. Listen to this. My so I was. You know how we're all, we're obsessed yeah. with the cement Bigfoot feet. 
I love that object, and I asked my parents, I was like, could you put dirt? I was like, I want, a, I want one of those. Mm -hmm. So they put dirt in a bucket, I put my foot in it, and mm -hmm. we made like a plaster cast of my foot. That's awesome, yeah. I, I thought it's that little was a, foot. Yeah. yeah. It's wild boy. I was wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the guy tracking Bigfoot. Great character too, and like, I got excited, anytime I'd see him like, uh, he popped up in like Marvel, like the, the Sasquatch character in, mm -hmm. in the comics, I yeah. think. And then, uh, you were talking about, what was, uh, in your book, Th you meant, I saw a thing about Thut. Yeah, that, that was, yeah, Jack Kurt, like during like the sort of like 70s Bigfoot boom, when you had like the bionic Bigfoot and the, in, uh, Bigfoot and Wild Boy, like this, there were like Bigfoot was was having a mo a cultural moment. Jack Kirby always having his like hand on the pulse <laughs> of pop culture did uh, um, Thunderfoot, Last of the oh, Half Humans, oh and that was going to be his Bigfoot comic. It ended up not happening, but um, then then he did a comic called um, called Moon uh, called Devil Dinosaur with Moon Boy, who was, was from like like a group of like sort of Bigfoot, you know, sort of like uh, um, you know, it's it's like kind of like a um, fractured uh, fairy tales kind of like version of uh, you know human evolution basically that oh you know that he was, he was riffing off of but but he did have this like image of, like obviously he wanted to do something starring like a fur covered semi-human <laughs> that's and, so and eventually was able to do it in devil dinosaur but thunderfoot uh last of the half humans would have been like full-on straight up Bigfoot and who knows maybe like they're always finding new things uh, like the Jack Kirby collector magazine They're always on the hunt for like new uh, Jack Kirby stuff that like no one's seen before so I wouldn't be surprised if something so far only the cover has surfaced uh, And maybe like a sketch or two, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's like, you know A full issues worth of pages of like a uh, Bigfoot la uh, Thunderfoot list of the I'm like, Oh my god, I found the missing rolls of the Gimlin uh, Patterson Gimlin film and a copy of Thunderfoot or the full fully realized uh, Thunderfoot last the half humans there was a MacGyver episode called ghost ship a great episode where uh, MacGyver fights Bigfoot and it's like uh, uh, a guy like with a voice changer but he's like beating MacGyver up and throwing him it's mm -hmm. it's awesome and then Bigfoot showed up on quantum leap um, do, do, do. yeah it wasn't wasn't that like the pre-credits thing where he's like, he, like looks in the mirror and he's like <laughs> I Bigfoot. <laughs> do, 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 do. He leaps into Bigfoot. <laughs> right. Wait, that's an amazing episode too. There's so much gold. Like I can't get over still Harry and Henderson's where John, Harry's doesn't exist and John Lithgow's like running a muck in Seattle. <laughs> He's like, "Why are you crying?" He's like, "Dad, you just trashed the house. <laughs> you buried your sister in an unmarked grave." <laughs> Big, like Pizza Hut had their Bigfoot pizza. Yeah, it was like they're acknowledging the character Bigfoot. It's like I, I always think it's weird to like market your pizza with like the image of a giant foot. <laughs> yeah, especially like like cheese. And all that stuff. Like, where's the logic? Like, what's the? Who, who, who's, it was like yum Bigfoot. <laughs> we're like, gonna give you a big. Here's a big dismembered foot it's, in your pizza box. It's like it's got some from under cheese. <laughs> it's cheese from the bottom of the... Of the, of, of the, of from, the yeah, from between Bigfoot's toes. You, yeah, Bigfoot sauce. <laughs> if they named him Big Turd, there was going to be no... There was going to be no pizza in his future. Like an Adams Family cereal. They had... What's the hand? Is that it or thing or what? That's thing. thing, yeah. They had a severed hand like on the box. Mm -hmm. It's like I don't want to eat that cereal. Yeah, yeah. Like... Pizza Hut still doesn't make the Bigfoot pizza, so that tells you right there, like how how well that thing, that thing went over. <laughs> who is the mom in Harry and the Henderson? If it's not Dee Wallace, who is that? Melinda Dillon. Okay, the mom from a Christmas, Christmas story. story. That makes it because it's like I know she's in. Here somewhere as the mom in something. So I'm like, Close Encounters of the Third yeah. Kind. Too. Close Encounters. Okay, that's why I'm thinking E. T. She's 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 the uh, the Close Encounters mom, and like D. Wallace was kind of hired to be her, but yeah. for E. T. You know, because E. T. is almost like um, Close Encounters, and E. T. is almost like an officer and a gentleman and Top Gun. You know, like where it's oh like my they God. could have been sequels, but they weren't. What a double! F you should they should. It's like great double bill. Close Encounters is to E.T. as Officer and a Gentleman is to Top, Top Gun. Gun. And, and so you can imagine if E.T. Uh, were Close Encounters 2, it would have been like, well, where's Dad? Remember he's in that ship with those aliens? <laughs> yeah. Remember yeah, he went in that spaceship yeah, he, and, uh, with those aliens? Yeah, he didn't care about us. Yeah, he just wanted to go off with those aliens. <laughs> and now we're, you know. 
and then you know E.T. is like a different alien. E.T. is from a different set of aliens who think those aliens are assholes, assholes. from Close Encounter. That box set I need to get to, it's like my dad fucking <laughs> sucks. It's like volume one, two, and three. Oh, what up? Yeah, my There's... dad named me after the dog. <laughs> we had a dog named Steven. The pizza should be in here any minute. It's uh, I ordered a big pizza... I brought their, their back. I hope you like from <laughs> London cheese on the pizza. <laughs> Bigfoot's frozen foot. <laughs> you, you know, you take that foot and you put it in like a deli slicer. <laughs> <laughs> I got his big stinky toe. <laughs> on the Bigfoot pizza, there's garlic knots. <laughs> or the toe. Or the body. <laughs> uh, like Martha Stewart would do like around Halloween, she'd do like really cool kind of like food things that are like you know like a witch's hand and then like you know i don't know like uh fritos or something <laughs> oh yeah like close your eyes yeah. put your hand in the box but she would do like so i could i could see i, I could see martha stewart doing like big foot you know where it's basically like a giant edible big foot <laughs> yeah. you know, a life-size edible big foot i get his butt <laughs> <laughs> big butt imagine if they found like butt prints they got named after that so, so he's been leaving ass prints all over the Pacific Northwest. So Sasquatch, okay, Bigfoot is like legitimately, like genuinely a like a, a, a Native American legend. I th and is that what Sas like is Sasquatch? I think Sasquatch like a Native comes American from word? that. Okay, uh, I'm not positive, mm -hmm. but uh, he's like called different things around the country too. Like they call him like skunk ape, mm -hmm. uh, and different terminology. So there's Yeti now. Is Bigfoot an American invention? You know, is did Yeti come first? Did Bigfoot come in terms of like like you know if you look at like I feel like it feels like Bigfoot maybe came first because I feel like I'm thinking Bigfoot is is in the grand tradition of American bullshit. Yes, and, and it's like okay, it's created here, and then it's like somebody here was like, hey, uh, to make this Bigfoot story better, let's come up with like. A Bigfoot of like the Himalayas. How about that? Yeah. And then we'll call him the Yeti. You know, like I, I don't think it's like, oh yeah. There's also this legend in the Himalayas about a guy called the Yeti. You know that 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 is. Uh... I think there was like stories popping up in like the twenties in like mm -hmm. papers or like even before then. We saw the wild man in the woods running around or something like that. There was like a point where like Europeans would. Um, bring back reports of like giraffes and then they were like kind of considered cryptozoology where it's like and they talk about this like long necked creature and uh that like explorers have seen but it's it's obviously fanciful it's it, there's no such thing Un until it was like you know you bring back a giraffe and it's like okay here's verifiable like this this is like the worst saying ever but it's like <laughs> Uh, every legend has some basis in fact and it's like no sometimes there's just sometimes somebody just makes up a story and it's a cool story and it catches on so like it's just you could just as easily say oh yeah there's this giant hairy guy that lives in the woods and then, and then you got bigfoot uh as like actually observing a like seeing a bear or whatever and thinking it's a it's a giant guy or something you know we have open minds like i i it would take extraordinary evidence even though i've seen a like like a, a home movie of bigfoot uh, it would take extraordinary evidence for me to believe the extraordinary claim that Bigfoot is real, but you know, I'm open. I'm open minded. If some if somebody produces that, then 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 I'm willing to yeah, if revise. One of the, if one my, of the Total Recall fans yeah pr sends us their uh, you know their own home movie that they they captured on horseback, and you know what that the Bigfoot movie is way more famous than the Zapruder film. Yeah, like, like I've got that Bigfoot movie burned into my head. This is a pretty film, not not so much, not so much. Did you hear that Abraham's a pretty? <laughs> Suck, Suck it, it. <laughs> you and your grassy. <laughs> no, you can stick it up your grassy knoll, Abraham's a pretty. Yeah, it's Patterson Gimlin all day, baby. Bigfoot's trying to get back to his uh, the woods. He's but he has to cross the uh, interstate. R. Crumb's comic about did a, did a comic about Bigfoot about like a oh, guy who that. like like it was based on this guy's like eyewitness accounts of like living among the Bigfoot and I think he I think this guy had like 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 a like a sexual relationship with like a female Bigfoot what? or whatever and and was and kind of like lived in in like a Bigfoot cave with like a whole Bigfoot family and oh, I didn't know that and maybe even had some kids with the <laughs> the, 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 the female Bigfoot is a swamp thing a Bigfoot <laughs> 
It's like I see I see the prints all over the swamp. <laughs> yeah, swamp thing, man thing. Swamp foot. Swamp foot, <laughs> man <laughs> butt. <laughs> Big thing. <laughs> There's also like a um, found footage flick uh, by Bobcat Goldthwait that he did called Willow Creek. You know that that um, statue of the Bigfoot that's at the Anamichi's Museum. That's the Morlocks from the Time Machine. That face oh is totally God. a Morlock face. So that's that's a in joke reference. You know, Whoa. We, we can direct you to the uh, Total Recall Institute of Sasquatchology. Yeah. The T R I S. Yeah, the, the Total Recall Institute of Sasquatchology. Oh, we'll have a uh, T-shirts and patches. Yeah, we'll have a, a link, and and you can. Uh, you can uh, you know, check out the, the body of knowledge that we've accumulated on the subject, and, and uh, we have a feature where you can add your own uh, uh, accounts, data, yeah. to, to this ongoing scientific project. It's, it's the story that needs to be told, the story of, of Sasquatch. The, the, this, like, this parallel uh, you know, creature that's, that's lived among us and, and just, you know, just travels in different circles. That's, you know. Yeah, uh, seems to be popping up off. All over the all over the globe. Yeah, in, in two places in uh, uh, in all of North America and the Himalayas. Yeah, the two places. It's that's wild. You know the folks doing the the good work going on. They're they're not just wandering aimlessly around in the woods uh, like an emperor's new clothes type situation. Yeah, I I I kind of picture like the whole Bigfoot story as like a way to like. Uh, uh, cover up like deliverance kind of stuff <laughs> that's going on in the woods. Like John Lithgow, I love his suit, the, the uh, corduroy with the plaid. Looks great. And, I, and then the, the tie that's like made out of yarn. I always wanted this uh, lamp. This seems like a reference to Christmas Story. Oh my god, the leg lamp! <laughs> he shows up with the Bigfoot leg lamp and she's like, oh, another one of these leg lamps? <laughs> you fucking asshole. And I'm I wanted that fucking plate leg too. Any Bigfoot paraphernalia, please send it to our P.O. box. And, and the Lost Continent of Mew. Have you heard about the Lost Continent? No. I, I mean, I've mentioned this I, on previous episodes, like that um, I was and, and possibly still am working on like a graphic novel about the uh, life of um, Otto Binder, the comic book writer. But like he, after like his comics career, like, you know, fizzled out to a certain degree, he pivoted to, uh, uh, cryptozoology, pseudoscience, UFO, ufology, and so you know I've, I've been reading a lot of like his books, his like uh, sort of in the mold of like chariots of the gods, and those, he, was, he wrote like those kind of books. So like I'm reading these these books, and so like there's all this like the lost continent of Mu, which is like you know pretty interesting, and uh, like it, it's the lost continent of Mu. It's kind of it's it's similar to Atlantis. It's like this you know this uh, sort of mythical or semi-mythical thing that kind of like fills in the gaps in our like knowledge of the ancient world. I'm gonna so, check that out. So I don't know if, I don't know if uh, Bigfoot ever spent any time in Mew and Atlantis and <laughs> maybe we wrote a boat, uh, maybe, maybe maybe some of the Bigfoots uh, you know left, uh, left Atlantis on a little boat, a little raft. There's like a, a subsect of the Bigfoot fans that are like, they're like Bigfoot's an alien. <laughs> Where they're like, uh, yeah, why not? They were uh, Bigfoot. They're like, I saw two red eyes drop from a hovering UFO. <laughs> well, I could see. We think of aliens as being this sort of like, um, this like homogenized thing. Like, okay, it's all the grays or whatever. But I could see aliens having like, you know, different uh, different forms that they can take, take different optimal forms, or or different like um, genetic engineering, where it's like, okay, we need the grays. To kind of like pilot the ships and do this and that, and then we got the um, the uh, the Bigfoots to kind of, as like the the brute strength to kind of like shake things up and do some of the dirty work, <laughs> and you know, and, the, and then the Grays show up, and then maybe there's you know somebody else who's you know got like you know like six legs or whatever oh, that can, can like awesome. do this and that. So so I I could, I could see Bigfoot being. But that, th that's like the sort of thing that would be in like an Otto Binder book would be like a Bigfoot. Oh, did Bigfoot come from a flying saucer? Who's, who's to know? <laughs> I was out there in the field and I saw Bigfoot drop out of the, the UFO. <laughs> and he left two giant prints in the ground. That maybe that's why those footprints are so, like, that they just like, maybe he's real light, but like he's dropping out of a spaceship, so. <laughs> like, <per> <laughs> that's, a, that's a beautiful drawing of, 
of uh, Bigfoot. But even that evil one. Oh, I know. Thing. So what, John Lithgow, he's he's like, he's like the, um, he's uh, like the Thomas Kincaid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> he's like, um, uh, I can't remember if if he his main thing is 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 art in this. He's like uh, April O'Neil. Like mm -hmm. he does. Oh, he works at his dad's. Um, he manages uh, like a sporting goods store, but wants to be an artist. It's like maybe he should p pivot into that. Like those are pretty, uh, those are pretty, awesome. pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, I, I mean, I guess this maybe like this is like Rick Baker. You know, this oh, is like yeah, you know, this is probably part like this is part of why uh, John Lithgow is like punching holes in the wall and up because he like <laughs> he's got all this creativity and he wants to wants to create things and 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 he's just so frustrated in his sporting goods job, so he's. Punching holes and yes, he's uh, attacking the neighbors. <laughs> and he, he knocked over the refrigerator and spun it around in the kitchen. Yeah, and this this Sasquatch that he draws that's like part part <laughs> of his art and stuff is obviously just, you know, a figment of his imagination. Needed to see that yeah. this version of the movie like yesterday. <laughs> this is a little like um, Close Encounters too, where it's like he's drawing all these pictures and Finally he um oh we got M M at Walsh. The um then he, he goes and lives in the woods with the Bigfoot, which he's just running around the woods by himself. Thinking, is like, is Alf kind of, like, like does this predate Alf? I guess not. I was going to say, like, they saw Alf, and they're like, or they saw Harry and the Hendersons, and they're like, let's do, like, Harry and the Hendersons, but, like, we, we can't have this, we, like, we can't make this giant, so let's just make this, like, little <laughs> puppet. And he's from space. Yeah, Chewbacca is, like, yeah, Bigfoot from space. I mean, um... You know, Star Wars is like such a pastiche of different things. It's like, okay, so we got this, we got that, we got Bigfoot, we got, you know, oh, anything you yeah. could possibly want. And then uh, we did have that great fight, Chewie versus Wampa. Wampa. And Wa yeah, and, and it's basically Sasquatch versus Yeti. Like, uh, like the Wampa is like the, the, the snow Bigfoot, and then Bigfoot's the, the, the all-American <laughs> Bigfoot. You know, he's he's, he's the, like, I am a real American. He's, he's, it's uh, all he's like the green camouflage. <laughs> Chewbacca is like Bigfoot with a crossbow. Like he's basically he's like if if Love him. if like Bigfoot joined the cast of The Walking Dead, you know, like they're they're fighting these zombies and then the Bigfoot comes out. And he's got his crossbow. I'm like, uh, that's my favorite season. <laughs> did you watch that uh, Sasquatch documentary that's on Hulu? I did. Okay, and it's it's longer than I thought because it's like multiple episodes. I so I didn't watch the whole thing. But. It's uh, three episodes and it's um like a. a that, yeah, that journalist, uh, investigative journalist is like covering a murder on a cannabis farm that three uh, folks are, are, are torn apart and he says it's by a Bigfoot possibly. I'm gonna slap the handcuffs on Bigfoot <laughs> by the end of it, so. <laughs> they give him the chair and he like bursts into flames. <laughs> like like the, the Patterson-Gimlin film that like if it were a hoax then you know they would have been like so pleased with what they did with the first one that they would have done a second one and a third one. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like if it was really a hoax, they would have like kept going. But like, it's like no, this is the only shot of Bigfoot we got, and and we're done. I don't. Know, maybe there's like too much, too much uh, uh, heat too on much them. Heat on them. But certainly that's faded enough where they could they could create a sequel. But there there hasn't been one. We should like convince them to like. Uh... You know, come out of retirement. Come out like, of retirement. Like, do one of those, like, uh, reality shows where it's like they bring the band back together. <laughs> one of these guys passed away. Okay. I can't... But the one guy was in that um, Hulu documentary. Okay. Whoever's Alive was in that. And uh, also the guy that played... Was in the Bigfoot suit is alive, too. So, I mean, you, we got Bigfoot. Bigfoot's back. The guy who claims to be in the guy in the yeah. The, um, now, did the three of them do like a press conference where, like, arm in arm, kind of like, <laughs> okay, yeah, it's fake. It's the guy who played big. Like, like this guy came forward separately, and then the other two were like, I don't know what this guy's talking about, right? There's yeah, there, there's a uh, the one of the guys was, was out in front from Jump Street, and the other guy like, hu like hung back for like thirty years, mm -hmm. and then finally is like, you know, coming out going to conventions and stuff. The guy that claims he's played Bigfoot came out with this uh, information. Mm -hmm. There's so many moving parts to the mm -hmm. to the, the, the Gimlin story, but um, I think the guy that made the costume was, I don't know if he was like a special effects guy or a magic shop. It was Rick shop. Baker. Rick Baker. <laughs> so, yeah, it was his first job. Yeah. He's like, 
<laughs> it was a uh, Star Wars leftover. It was Chewbacca. Yeah, like, which would you rather do? Like, create a costume for a movie and get paid, you know, a lot of money and, and, and maybe, like, win a, like win an Oscar or something? <laughs> would you rather have that or create this thing that, like, has endured that people, like, you know, take as, like, a real thing and is, is like, embedded Still in the consciousness? out there. Yeah. The guy that made it, he said he kept quiet because he didn't want to... I'm a, you know, reveal like it was like thought of as like a magic trick or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's it's he, fun, yeah. And he didn't want to uh, re like reveal how the trick was done, mm -hmm. but I think he 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 came forward, and he said, uh, you know, to wear like shoulder pads under it and like mm -hmm. um, I think he said like put your hands like gloves on like sticks or something and okay, and the reason the shoulder pads. Or why he had to turn like his whole body uh -huh. to like face the camera, <laughs> turn, turn, and then the zoom. I think the zoom is like post production. The zoom <laughs> on Bigfoot is like what the the like you know the the TV shows would do when they're showing the film. Yeah. They they would do like an like a in in house zoom the zoom on it, zoom and freeze. I love on The Simpsons. He's like we can see your watch. Harry Henderson's has that uh, iconic Drew Struzan poster too, where like the family's looking through like Harry's like burst outline in the wall i uh I, like i follow uh drew struzan on, on twitter and he's oh, always nice. posting like okay here's the original art for this here's the original. it's like every you know every movie you like you ever cared about um, do you have any last last thoughts about bigfoot before we wrap this one up um you know always in the cool cool location uh you know we, you know, we uh, love humanitarian humanitarian uh we love bigfoot pioneer of environmentalism but, yeah because that's basically like he's he's defending the forest, basically. Yeah. Like, from like loggers and stuff. Yeah, that when, um, our, our didn't do a very good job because <laughs> you know they got completely uh, decimated. He lied in his resume when uh, they're like he he was he had spent ten years in the rainforest. They're like nice job, Bigfoot or whatever. Yeah, yeah way to <laughs> way to way go. To watch that one. <laughs> yeah, we love his pizza. <laughs> Glad he got, you know, he's got in the commercial, he's got the chef's hat on and he's throwing the dough in the air. He, he sprinkles his from <laughs> under cheese. They're like, it's real pout. <laughs> You've been watching the Bigfoot episode of Total Recall, Total Recall Institute of Sasquatchology, uh, episode yeah. one. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, and uh, Fantastic Four Grand Design. I'm Matt Zioli. And uh, please uh, support my Patreon. Go to patreon.com and search Tom Scholey. Uh, and uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Tom Scholey or on Instagram on, at Tom underscore Scholey. And uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. And you can follow me also on Instagram at cinema underscore tune. Okay, happy hunting. Because we're looking for Bigfoot. Yeah, keep, we're, we're keeping on, our eyes peeled for that. We're on his trap. Now, one of us is the skeptic. And the other is the believer, so we'll, uh, have to, we'll have to figure that one out. You're the believer. I'm the yeah. I'm the skeptic. Oh wait, was I the believer and you're the skeptic? Okay. I think I think I'm the believer. You're the skeptic. Okay. You but but you're well, you, but you're open to it. I'm open to it. You're open to it, but I, I'm I'm fully on board. Okay. Uh, uh, will you uh, show me the ropes <laughs> yeah. of Sasquatch? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. We could t tie this in with our learning the ropes episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> It was that one Learn the Ropes episode where a La La Zotto... He had to uh, wrestle Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> and he won, actually. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know why? Uh, he almost lost because Bigfoot was sprinkling some from under <laughs> cheese. Well, uh, Big, Bigfoot, Bigfoot was the, the masked luchador <laughs> in that episode. And then, then uh, <laughs> um, uh, you know, Lyle Alzado <laughs> humiliated him by ripping his mask off. But yeah, he was... Yeah, what's Lyle Alzado... Uh, Lyle Alzado... When Lalazeta ripped his uh, mask off, he was basically had to retire. He was yeah. It's a disgrace. He had, it, it was leave, it was a yeah get out of town. Get out, match. Loser leaves town. Loser leaves town match. But yeah, I can't wait. We get those Bigfoot uh, Institute shirts. Yeah, and, 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 and merchandise and the, those uh, cement Bigfoot feet so you can make the footprints. Yeah, uh, we will be. Uh, if you see any tracks out there, uh, you know it was made by uh, the Total Recall show. We got the like little Total Recall logo <laughs> in the footprint. <laughs> And we're also going to be doing some Total Recall branded crop circles. I, I guess <laughs> Harry and the Hendersons uh, could also be be a sequel to uh, Christmas Story. Oh my <laughs> it's god! It's a Bigfoot story. Yeah. It says Fragile, and they pull that furry like foot out of the box. <laughs> yeah, like that that leg uh, that leg lamp gets like covered with like mold and stuff, and so it looks like a 
The Bigfoot leg. The voiceover, he's like, Dad loved that Bigfoot, hairy, shaggy, dirty foot. <laughs> My father put the Bigfoot lamp in the front window. It was, it was sex on this. I can't believe, like, Ralphie got so worked up I mean, over that, that, that lamp. <laughs> like, come on. It's, it's young Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was, it was the leg from... Uh, Kim Cattrall's mannequin. <laughs> My father had uh, Kim Cattrall's leg from mannequin in the window. No. I'm going to tell you the story of the time my father ran over Bigfoot and he said the worst, the grand poobah of all swear words that'll uh, curl your toes when you hear it. Fudge. But he said a real one. The, the, the Jeremiah Johnson of all cuss words. Now, when my mother asked me where I heard about Bigfoot, I said I heard about it on the Little Orphan Annie radio show. But I never missed an episode. My father was cuddling that furry, gross, <laughs> stinky, <laughs> Bigfoot foot that he ordered. He was... While I drank oval tea. <laughs> Two boxes showed up. One was that nasty, hairy Bigfoot foot, and the other one was Kim Cattrall's <laughs> leg from Mannequin 2 <laughs> on the moon. <laughs> okay, we'll see you next time. On that note, on that note, we solved the mystery of Bigfoot, the my, lost continent of Mew. My foot, I'm... I, th I think me. Kim Cattrall's uh, character from from Mannequin was was from the Lost Continent of Mew, or, or from Atlantis, or something. Her character was from the Lost Continent, and also the in the Christmas story that was the yeah, he's like, I love that leg lamp, and my last name is Tarrant. <laughs> yeah, like he's like, you heard of Young Sheldon? It's like it's Young, young Quentin. Quentin. <laughs>